Hello everyone and welcome to another video here today. We are actually going to be covering a Zhukai with actually Superior's alt inferior. We've got Amir with us today. How are you doing today, Amir? I am doing amazing. Getting to uh, getting to the end of the season. Uh, we actually have a spinning Zhukai here. <laughs> um, you know, the end of season bugs. Um, enjoy the small things you can get in before <laughs> the season is ended. And uh, they fix a lot of this stuff, but yeah, having a been playing ranked myself, having a good few couple games, and now I get to watch some other high elo players. Absolutely, I mean, end of the season kind of grinds happening right now. That's what a lot of the games will be uh, we're covering here, especially with this Jukai game. This is uh, you know Inferior doing his end game grind, and like you said, yeah, it's kind of always enjoyable to watch these kind of bugs he was even visually gliding there for a moment but we uh we lost that too surely he goes back to infinite spinning and, and gliding here shortly for us yeah the infinite spinning jukai you'll you never know what's coming you don't know if he's actually using his e or if uh, he's just walking at you exactly now for anyone that doesn't know how jukai works we'll just go over the kit real quick here for you versus his passive juggernaut chef so food and beverages made by Zhukai have 20% increased recovery. So you'll heal or gain more resources from them. And when cooking, he earns a stack of Juggernaut Chef. This increases his max HP up to 100 stacks. So you can already see he's collecting potatoes with camping guide. So he'll be cooking those shortly. His first main ability Q, lost in the sauce. Zhukai throws a barrel at the targeted direction, dealing damage to enemies hit and reducing their speed of enemies within an area around it. Next is his W, Eat Up. He um, chooses an ally or himself to heal, and this also increases their defense for a short time. Third is his E, which is uh, Walk It Off. Uh, first there is, is his dash moment, so he can target direction, and if he hit the first thing he hit, hits of an enemy uh, will cause them to go airborne, and that'll stop his momentum. He can then cast Heavy Meal, the second half of his E, where he'll slam the ground, dealing damage to enemies in area and slowing them. And lastly is his ultimate, Burn to a Crisp, where Zhukai will channel and deal a bunch of damage in front of him in a cone. Uh, and that's that's the, the main go-to kit here for the character. Yeah, Zhukai is not a very complex character, but when played right, I think he's one of the most effective frontliners because he's got a decent amount of damage um, with his E, with both parts of his E actually dealing a lot. Uh, his ult is really annoying to play against as you're being slowed and taking damage. And then overall, he's just an annoying character to fight because you can't really block all of his CC as a decent amount of it is just slows. Um, and then he's also healing more than you are because his food is doing more. Exactly. I think that's one of the biggest things. A lot of reasons why people pick up Jukai over some other tanks is that simply that food effect, that extra increased healing. Like, for example, most Jukais will always be running the camping guy to guarantee the sweet potatoes. Sweet potatoes healing for 1,176 health is absolutely insane. It can actually make a lot of the difference in fights where a little bit of extra HP stalls out just a little longer for you. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's actually supposed to be 1,060 normally but we're on a sunny day which is probably shukai's best weather effect where food is actually going to give even more healing so we're getting a bit extra out of it going up to i think it was the 1116 um it, it's gonna be very hard for teams to try and counter this well exactly plus uh just to talk about this so not not only does this team have the food buff they have the sunny day which increasing the food buff even more they then have Zhukai having his own healing. Then they also have Theo for healing. This team comp, unless you can burst and instant kill someone, they're going to be almost impossible to beat. It's like poke comps are going to be completely, uh, I don't want to say useless, but it's going to be futile trying to get through this team on neutral. Yeah, you're going to have someone poke over to our Zhukai and then he's going to press W on himself. Maybe a bit more poke comes through. Theodore is going to be throwing his Qs over and then... You know, if they have any extra poke after that, we're just going to see our guy eat up some of that food and go right back up to full HP. No, exactly. And I think the uh, most important thing to kind of consider here when you're looking at 
a character like Jukai, especially in this type of comp specifically, you really want to make sure that you're not diving too deep. You've got a Theo and you've got a Cicela. So we're going to be playing really front to back, hiding behind or staying in front of that shield of Theo's, making sure you just never die and probably just holding on to our E until we have to like cancel and engage from an enemy. Yeah, there's no reason to actually throw out this E if we don't have to because the scariest thing about playing Shukai is if you miss E and you keep going forward, then uh, then you might be completely out of position. You'll be thrown too far forward and then you won't be able to walk back to your team. Unlike a few other tanks, you don't have a really easy way to get damage res uh, damage reduction. Um, as other tanks have a button they press, and then they start taking 80%, 60% reduced damage. Chukai can only press W on himself to give him a bit more defense, to give him that heal. So, you do have to be a bit more wary of where you are positioning. You're not as beefy as other people. No, exactly, yeah. It's, uh, it's definitely probably one of the hardest things to fully grasp with Chukai, just where he's, he's more of like a pseudo tank. Especially when you like compare him to the characters like Alonzo, Lennox, Mai that are just so much more tankier and have a kit that lets them just be that extra level of tanky. I need to loosen up my muscles. Yeah, but Shukai does bring a lot of CC, a lot of annoyance, and he's just so good at supporting the team with all of his different healing, the obvious food passive that allows him to help his team out a bit more, and then just providing a lot with his weapon skill as well being a spear character having that cc in his kit and we're actually going to see the knockup come over just a free knockup and one shotting off of it setting up his team so perfectly that the theodore doesn't have to worry about doing anything sadly our Cecilia does go down to the darko that jumped our backline but it doesn't matter the enemy team does not have close to enough damage to uh to deal with this now as it is just darko versus theodore and Jukai. No. We can both heal each other. Yeah, exactly. The sustain of the team comp is really shining there. I mean, definitely great usage there. Had the corner, hide behind the wall. They had the Cicela for, for the vision and be able to pull in through the wall. I mean, great engage. That's one of those moments, though, like you have to be careful because technically, if Jukai didn't land that there, that fight could have gone a lot worse because Cicela died instantly just to like the Darko going in. Luckily, the clean engage and surprise really really gave the advantage to the team but i think in this scenario we're going for it because we are almost guaranteed that we can hit this e we believe in ourselves you know can't never throw it out so yeah no exactly just, uh, eventually look for it make sure we're taking it in a somewhat safe position where the game isn't over if we miss um actually going to do that a bit here getting a bit scary because we're 1v2 in the back line, but our team is able to do enough damage to their front liner, and we're still alive, able to heal ourselves. Our Theodore is healing us. We're eating our food. There's just so much healing coming out to the Jukai. Yeah, I think we're really, really uh, u utilizing and giving the benefit of the Theodore that we have, really creating that space. Because the second that we go in, like a tank, a lot of times when you run in like that, like as a tank, and you're sort of putting a lot of pressure on you you're immediately forcing the enemy team to use cooldowns onto you and you have to be able to have a way to keep yourself alive i genuinely don't think Jukai is a character that is the greatest for that but the, the second we saw that there i mean theo had the easiest shield lineup possible plus having the shield uh, theo healing your own food plus also Jukai's um w being able to keep him up i think it's just perfectly fine to be able to take all that extra damage and put pressure on the enemy team yeah, realistically, a lot of teams are going to have to do two Shukai health bars if they want to start trying to kill him. But we're going to see the E landing, pressing ult to try and get the slow, and then setting up our Theodore to press his ult. And we can just see it here. They're dealing a decent amount of damage to our Shukai, but it doesn't matter because we're just eating our food, pressing W on ourselves. We have our, uh, we have our protocol violation going off, giving us a bit of extra health as well. And it's just so hard to get through him. Right, and actually, two things also really talk about with this build specifically. One, we rush protocol uh, violation. Probably one of the better things a lot of times you guys will do is rush uh, the tax skill upgrade, as it is just brings a lot of extra utility, more HP. Always love that kind of stuff. And the second thing we went is commander headset. Now, I'm not 100% sure. We could double check here, but I believe he always goes commander headset with Jukai here, but 
with this comp specifically it works really well with theo because theodore loves to auto attack and that'll constantly proc his commander headset yeah commander's headset is a very nice item uh it's not amazingly statted but for it being a meteorite it has really good tank stats um the biggest thing about it is that it's balanced around the fact that it is giving your team healing for auto attacking a target um, and bonus damage but alongside that we also see in his inventory he has the diving suit ready and i assume this is for a guardian suit if he gets a four score online as because chukai isn't the tankiest character we also get a bit of a moonwalk theodore but uh yeah because chukai isn't the tankiest character he wants to get that guardian suit which has damage reduction built into it gives him a bit more beefiness jumping into a fight makes him play, allow him to misplay a bit more often with all of that extra health and all that defense um because chukai is a very committal character if you ever press this e into a fight no, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, it definitely is a guardian suit angle for sure. I mean, the fact that Jukai just stacks HP in general, it is probably one of the better items to have on him. I mean, we're already at 3.2k health and we're on one item. So Jukai just loves this. Plus the protocol constantly just gaining as much It'll stats as possible. Customers now. Yeah, I think our team might give us this four score as I don't know if... Uh... <laughs> If our Theodore needs his Talarian this early, or if he actually will even be going to land. Uh, it's definitely um, going to be a Talarian for like sure. It. Yeah, it's going to be a Talarian on the sports watch. But I think I think you're right. I think it is going to go to Jukai here. Talarian's more of a last item option on Theodore. No, it's oh, actually going to... Are... Is it going to be... I assume Persona. Yeah, Persona makes way yeah. more sense there. Um, Getting a bit more damage out to our team. And if... Uh, tank stats are only for people who take damage if we well, just dodge all of our opponent's abilities why do we need the tank stats anyways yeah i do think i do think genuinely though that we actually could have probably given this to the jukai i mean look at us we're almost we we would have been on four <laughs> items on both of our carries jukai's on one item i actually think making sure that jukai doesn't get instantly blown up is more value than the extra damage although persona is a really 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 good four score item so I yeah. in, in solo queue, yeah. you're probably not arguing that. Getting the team mental up, making our carries feel a bit better. Oh, um, very unfortunate as the Ava is going to actually finish the TP. And now we're just going to be healing our Theodore. Like, I don't know, Jackie tried to jump in, got pulled back by Sisola, and then we're able to just peel for Theodore, giving this Jackie a bit of a hard time as we're just going to keep slowing her. No amount of uh, CC reduction would actually be able to deal with that as we, we can't just stop these slows permanently oh well this might be our actual first neutral fight as we don't have the immediate jump in but we do actually do still go in again perfectly lined up with the theo here we're just going to be able to keep ourselves sustained a again there's just so much space being created you have to be careful with this this type of engage i mean it's working perfectly clean here as like everyone is just focusing the zhukai trying to get him killed and he's not going down but the scary thing is is that if a team has the opportunity to see an angle and jump past you and go onto your back line it can go into the worst there thankfully for them they, that enemy team only had yawn so he had no real dive threat outside of that it was all isol afterwards yeah i was gonna say not sure if they didn't realize it but they didn't actually full kill the jackie body so she crawled over to the corner in hospital and just self-revived and now TP'd out of hospital back to her team. But um, yeah, with the, with fights like that, as long as you're able to get on their primary engager, if they only have one, you should be fine. Um, as we're just kind of CCing their yawn, making sure that he has to focus us. Our Theodore's throwing over the heels and we don't have to worry too much anymore. Well, exactly and it looks like we're gonna get another catch a lot of uh jumping and kind of getting a surprise it's interesting to say because like you know we, we we looked at the jukai we looked at this comp you know we thought we would expect a lot more neutral gameplay a lot more utilizing that self-sustain but instead it's uh it's interesting to see how inferior is taking this a different direction where he's he's saying you know i have all this extra sustain i have this way to be able to keep my health bar up a lot longer during a fight so I'm going to jump in there, burn my resources, 
overextend, make sure everyone's on me, and give the most free room possible to both my carries. Yeah, it's scary if uh, the enemy team ever plays something like a double dive comp, um, where they now have two people running at your back line. It becomes a lot harder to play like this, as you might stop one of them, but the other one will get through, as Jukai can't stop too many people at a single time unless they stand right on top of each other. So it's nice to see he's assessing a lot of these fights. Not many of them are running double dive, so he's able to just jump on the first person that would want to jump on his back line, deny them the chance to actually engage, and then keep playing the fight from right in front of his Theodore. Exactly, and actually we're looking at a lot of teams a lot of teams are crippled at this moment we're we're really only down to one more full team after this as one team's about to get eliminated potentially rotting for their life or, or buying back and uh yeah this this might be a clean sweep until the final fight at this rate yeah we have one team with the lenore lion and ava who is still doing pretty good 15 team kills and i think they've just secured a flood maybe killing the wicca line um, and then the rest of the teams are not looking amazing, but they're not completely out of the game yet, as there is still a couple more day cycles, and, you know, a few lucky, uh, lucky bear drops, lucky wolf drops, can actually stick, it can get you right back into the game. Yeah, for sure, although if I was a betting person, I'm gonna bet that it's Team 7 versus Team 4 at the end here, that's my guess, if I had to put... Yeah, I, I'd put my bets on Team 8. I believe in them. You have, you have faith in Team 8. Yep. <laughs> Actually, look at, look at all these right teams. We have, we have like every team in Uptown right now. It's going to be a bloodbath if uh, teams don't start scurrying out. We actually do, do have it. Right now, at this point, basically what Zhukai's team is trying to plan on doing here, Team 4, is just kind of comb through. They're, they know they're in a strong position. They're just looking for teams. They're going from vision to vision. Playing it slow and safe. Just haven't really hit anyone yet. I think they saw team, uh, the Luke team here start walking away. Team two. Yeah. Pretty sure they saw them and now are going to be looking to collapse on them. As they know that the vision was taken, they take it right back. And I don't know which one they want to fight. Because I think they see both teams coming from both sides right now. So it's just, which one are we going to take first? Yeah, so, okay, I think, okay, I can, I can help explain the thought process of what happened here. They saw the one team, then they saw the other team, started to go for it. Then they saw this team, the Abigail team, third part, fighting the Luke team. So we went in for that fight, and then they, <laughs> then they just kind of sat there and waited because they, they didn't want to get a third party themselves. Yeah, sadly, Team 8 actually will be getting fought here and falling on the floor because... Our Shukai is just able to find such good ease into the enemies. People aren't really ready for him to just walk up, press E, and they're all. A lot of them are connecting, but it looks like on the other side there were a, peop, a couple people fighting. Um, I think we did notice it as we still had a decent amount of vision, and it's gonna play the fight slow. Don't need to keep committing because we'd rather take two kills and let the one person get away than end up wiping and losing the game right there. No, for sure. And I kind of yapped over that last fight, but if I recall correctly, I believe again, uh, Zhukai took over the fight, controlling the threat of two targets, and then his two DPS just soloed the demo, I believe, or forced the demo away, because I think the demo was just trying to 1v2. Well, the Zhukai put all the threat onto Abigail and to the Bernice. Yeah. What's happening in a lot of these fights is exactly that, where we find the Shukai jumps forward, two people are focusing him, and then our two backliners are able to kind of just do their own thing, play their game, and we're positioning around our Theodore and not forcing our Theodore to position around us is very nice, because it means that our Theodore can play his game, and while it is a bit harder for us to do things, we just have to start maneuvering around him instead of trying to force our carry to uh to play our game well exactly yeah and i think that's really 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 important when you're ever playing with a character like theodore and you're a frontline tank always be conscious of where his w shield is and play around that it is a lifesaver it'll make a big difference in a lot of your gameplays yeah and we're actually gonna see a decent amount of poke coming out here that was a lot of damage for the short amount of time we got hit but yeah, just trying to get right back in front of our team 
not even actually trying to knock up the Lyan, just jumping over the wall and trying to find a way to block all of this damage coming out. Well, now we can kind of just chill and yeah. uh, don't need to fight anymore. I mean, rest in peace, Team 7. You weren't the final team to fight. But actually, yeah, to kind of talk more about how, how he did that really, really interesting way to watch that play because he knew that he couldn't stand directly in front and eat damage from Eva. So he kind of peeled off to the side, split up from his team, which could have looked bad as, as we saw, like, the Leanne tried to go in. Eva was putting some, uh, was trying to put some pressure. But then, yeah, he just kind of put himself back in front of the Theo shield, didn't help secure the kill onto the Eva, and sort of just denied all that zone with his own pressure there. Yeah, and we're going to see a team of two divers actually this time so i wonder if he's going to take it a bit slower or if he's going to try and find another way to force 2v1s um we're going to see q's going back and forth i don't think he's going to be taking too much damage but just knocking up and denying whoever is diving first and then slowing the next person to keep diving we're just trying to cycle these divers out and i assume yeah we're going to look for another knock up around our theodore making sure we're playing around the person that in reality will win us this fight sadly if our Sicilia goes down, it won't be too much of a difference compared to our Theodore. Yeah. I am happy, though, we did get to see both playstyles of the Jukai because that was a perfect example of what we were talking about. The normal way that we were expecting Jukai to be played against that double dive. He waited, they forced that engage, he counter engaged, kept the team safe, created a bunch of space. And that's really, really how you want to look to climb on Jukai. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.